So I'm remodeling my kitchen and I have these four older can lines that are not IC rated. IC means insulation contact, so these can lines cannot come in contact with insulation or any type of combustible. The reason older can lines were not rated for insulation contact is because they would get too hot and they need airflow to go through them continuously to cool them off. That's less than ideal because these are very drafty. They're probably equivalent to having a small window cracked in your house all the time. So the conditioned air from your house is continuously leaking up into your attic all year long. First off, I want to say the best and safest thing to do is to replace all non-IC rated can lights with newer IC rated can lights that are also airtight. And here is a new type of can light. I did replace some of them. Right here on the inside, you can see it's labeled IC. There's also a gasket that seals against the drywall to prevent any air from getting up into the attic. And it's also sealed up on top. There's no holes or anything for air to get through. And these can lights are designed to keep cool to the touch on the outside where it would touch the insulation. And you can blow insulation right over the top of these and not have to worry about it. That being said, I'm not going to replace all these can lights because it's a lot of work and it's also the most expensive option. But I do have some leftover polyisosanurate foam and I'm going to build some boxes that will give the proper clearance from combustibles over the top of these can lights. And then I'm going to seal around all the edges with spray foam and that's going to create a nice airtight seal around the can lights. And then you can insulate over the top of the foam boxes to add further R value. Additionally, I'm going to change all the light bulbs to LEDs, which will further reduce the risk of these ever getting hot. These old can lights also have thermal overload protection, which is a small rectangular sensor that's up at the base of the can light. I don't know if you can see it with the light on. And what that sensor does is it senses the heat coming off the bulb. And when it gets too hot, it'll actually shut off the bulb automatically. And then when things cool down, it will turn the bulb back on automatically. So it's an extra layer of protection. Okay, and that's it. That's how you foam non-IC rated can lights. And then later I'm going to come back and blow insulation over the top of all these. And I'm going to try to mount it up so that if you're ever up in the attic, you'll know where they're at versus having it be level because you don't want to accidentally walk in and ruin the foam boxes that you just built. So under this fiberglass bat is one of the newer can lights that I put in. I like to put fiberglass over the can lights because in case you ever need to access it from the bottom, all the insulation that you blowing in like this uh, ground up newspaper is not going to fall through the hole and also it's a little bit more heat resistant than the newspaper. 
So here's a foam box that's already done. You can see it's pretty solid. Once that foam sets up, it's not going anywhere. I use a little bit of the aluminum tape on the corners just to kind of hold everything in place until the foam sets up. All right, I'm all done. If you have any other ideas on how to insulate non-IC rated can lights or any other concerns or questions, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, please give me a like and subscribe. Thanks.